little bit roughage in the second half. Yeah. And it was the first conference opener, but for the Sooners, it was their second regular season game after having an easy time of it last week mm-hmm. against the Missouri State Bears, putting up a, almost a 60-burger on them. Oh, boy. And they only managed 35 today. Yeah. Currently, Texas Tech and Texas are a dandy. <laughs> Texas size shootout up in Lubbock. Yeah. Last time I checked the scoreboard, Texas A&M, excuse me, Texas Tech was up by a field, was trailing by a field goal. Then Texas was driving, so I have no idea what that score is now. Right. It was 30. It, Texas thought they were up 38 21, 38 14. They were going to be up three scores, but instead, they're only up by three. Yep. They were up by three. Let's see. Looking at the ESPN score analysis, the scoreboard analysis. Right now, Louisiana, Louisiana, Louisiana Monroe is behind UTEP as a score of 31 to 6 in the fourth quarter with 17 seconds left. Oh my goodness. And in other words, number four, Georgia is giving Arkansas a pounding. Wow. Yeah. In other words, Georgia is also giving Arkansas a pounding of a score of 20 to 10 in the third quarter. Or second year yeah, over there. and also okay. number fifteen, Oklahoma State is leading by seven points with against West Virginia with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. So Neil Brown trying to pick up his second win, and it looks like the UTEP Louisiana Monroe game is over with the score UTEP thirty one, Louisiana Monroe six is being the final. Hallelujah! Give them a cookie. They actually got a win. And actually, Louisiana Monroe is 0-3. Louisiana Monroe is 0-3. And UTEP is now 1-1. or maybe 1-2, one actually. Yes, they're 1-2. And Louisiana still trying to find itself. Yes, Louisiana Monroe. Louisiana Lafayette. The raging Cajun is still trying to find themselves. Mm-hmm. A dandy of a game earlier, Georgia Southern had to hold off. Oh, I was wrong. It was Oklahoma State. It was Oklahoma versus Kansas State. It was Kansas State beating Oklahoma. Yep, 48-35. And number, and number five, Florida topped Ole Miss today. With Kyle Trastorn, with true freshman Kyle Trastorn, a record whopping six touchdowns. Number nine, Louisiana won with a 50-yard field goal with time running out. I want to know how the heck do they do a rock on his child cheap, cheap uh, chip shot with time running out. Perfect. Mm-hmm. 50-yard chip shot, not bad. This is 53-yard. Now, uh, now we're looking at the analysis of the game. We see why Oklahoma blew that lead. Like I said before, and I'll say it again, the defense got tired. After all, their offense had the ball during the first half. Keep in mind, the defenses in the Big 12 are Kansas, uh, Kansas State the actually the won with a 50 yarder chip shot. Their, their, their best hope of making the Big 12 playoff is already. Gone. Yes, ma'am. And that and the pick and that late pick and late in the fourth still Oklahoma's fate. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma State is in progress right now against West Yeah, but here's a record. No other team in more than a Three, had three during the span loss as a 20 point, point favorite underdog. Not since 2009. Oklahoma has six losses under its belt. By losing more than 20 points. Ah. And here's the game you were talking about. Texas Tech and the Longhorns. The block punt led to a Longhorns touchdown. Yeah. Where 
and Texas thought they had scored a touchdown on a quarterback fumble from the Texas Tech quarterback, but they went back and reviewed it and overturned it, and Texas Tech got the ball back and went down and scored. All right. So right now, in the fourth quarter, as it is with 10 minutes left, Texas Tech is leading by a whopping 7 points, 42 to 35. So the Red Raiders are trying to pull an upset here mm -hmm. on their home field. And believe it or not, that's Kansas uh, City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes' is all Mm-hmm, sure is. And other games of note, sort of. Mm-hmm. Alabama LSU coming up in about. I mean, look LSU's at, uh, already playing right now against Mississippi State. That's in that's in sixteen minutes from now. LSU. It's, they're State already in the fourth the quarter. Auburn beat Kentucky twenty nine to thirteen. And they actually went for two points after Kentucky went down and scored the opening march. They gave up a touchdown or a two point conversion at Auburn. Oh, the lead back. it looks like Georgia's expanding their lead by 17 with 253 left in the third, making it 27 to 10 against Arkansas. Whoa, Georgia's about to lose to freaking Arkansas. Um, Georgia's beating Arkansas by 17 points in the third quarter. Wow, hello. <laughs> and the college game of the night the Crimson Time versus Mizzou. A whole, new, a whole new look with Missouri as Eli Drinkowitz. Oh, boy. And unfortunately, he gets to do a against a very angry bunch of elephants <laughs> on their home field, especially after last year. Oh, yeah. After they got utterly embarrassed last year. By the Auburn Tigers of all people. And LSU. And if they would have beaten Auburn, they may have made the SEC championship, but I, they probably would have won the championship, but I don't think it would have been enough to make the playoff. Last oh, and here's one of the other games you were talking about. Georgia Southern versus Louisiana Raging Cajuns. And Georgia Southern literally had to hold off, I think. They're, they're going for, they were going for a two-point attempt, and it counted. But the 53-yard chip shot is what sealed their fate. And Which led the Cajuns winning 20, 18, 20 to 18. If we were looking at. Oh, Lordy Army, what are you doing? Look at the game at 6 30 at Kyle Field. I'm looking at the Army Cincinnati score, and it does not look good for the Army Golden Knights. The Black, don't you mean the Black, the Black Knights? Knights? It doesn't look good for the Army Black Knights. They're losing by 14 points to the Cincinnati Bearcats in the fourth quarter. It was. Now that game, when I last checked the score, it was a field goal game, and it was 10-7. Yeah, but the score is now 24-10, to 10, Cincinnati. So that means Cincinnati has outscored Army 17-0. Yes. 17 to nothing. Yeah. Yikes. Um, Army? What are you doing? Y'all gonna have to open up that playbook with me, because y'all can't just run all night long. Being down by 14, y'all can't be doing that all night. Mm-hmm. You already have a 14. You, you were able to survive Middle Tennessee doing that, but you weren't going to survive Cincinnati doing that. Yep. All right. And now going to um, the college side to the pro side. Dave. Let's talk about Thursday night's battle in the swamp between the Jaguars and the Dolphins. Um, in the immortal words of stupid, that's a good Maybe you're not as good as we thought you were. Which is why they're sitting at 1-2 and two in the AFC South Division. Well, not only that, they are 1-1 one one in the AFC South. They are 0-1 out of the AFC South. Overall, yep. 1-2. and two. Yep, and the so Titans are 2-0 and oh in the AFC South. They're leading the AFC South. They are second in the AFC South. If Actually, I'm they're not. Titans are first. Tennessee first, Jacksonville second. Houston third, third, and the Colts fourth. What the, I thought, it, I, well, Houston hadn't, even, I, Houston hadn't even played an AFC South game yet. Actually, they, they had. They had. They have played a brutal schedule. Yep. I mean, Let's see, looking at the Titans schedule. The first two weeks. Looking at the Titans schedule. After they play against the Vikings tomorrow, 
the, the walking wounded of Minnesota tomorrow at noon. It'll be Ryan Tannehill versus Kirk Cousins, of all people. If, if Tannehill loses to Cousins, he should be walking home. He shouldn't even be allowed to be on the plane tomorrow. The yeah, but he's the starter. You forgot who the backup is. You forgot who the backup is. Here's the deal. If you are Ryan Tannehill, Mike Vrabel, and the Titans, and you go up in there and lose to a below-average quarterback who has his moments in Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tannehill should be walking home. True. He shouldn't be allowed to board the team flight back home. This is a game that is very winnable. Yeah. Two games that were pick'em games. Now you're in a game that you have almost an advantage across the board, almost. Actually, it is. And they got an opposite advantage. And here's and why. Have, I read in the, according to the Nashville Ledger, believe it or not, according to the Nashville Ledger, and two, and two of them Starters. Yes. According to the Nashville ledger, the way that the Titans beat both the Broncos and the Jaguars is when they flip flop things around. They did the George Costanza way of playing. Thank you for the Seinfeld reference. <laughs> yep. See. That was Seinfeld. Yes. George Costanza would always do stuff backwards. Yes. They managed to stop. Ja- they managed to stop uh, Derek Henry on the run game that frees up Ryan Tannehill's passing game, which they had no answer for. As Ryan Tannehill threw four touchdowns across the board on this. Even oh. though the Titans defense kind of looked so part of the second half when Gardner Minshew actually started. Yeah, that was when, like I said. I said it before, and I'll say it again. That's when fatigue set in. But luckily, thank God we were able to get downfield and have Gostowski. Do what Memphis Tigers do. Oh boy! Oh boy! It's the battle of the it's the battle of the second year quarterbacks Monday night. Now that game's going to be very very fun. It'll be and Patrick Mahomes Sunday, and the Super Bowl champion we'll Kansas City Chiefs taking on Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Um, we might be seeing a preview of two quarterbacks. That could be winning multiple Super Bowls. Patrick Mahomes is already on his way. But yeah. I think Lamar Jackson has an opportunity. Yeah. He's building and building our pieces around him. Or he Stop. can actually win a Super Bowl or two. Not maybe six, but I think both of them have a chance to at least get three, possibly four. Yes. I don't I don't I don't see anybody ever getting Back-to-back dynasties. I don't. I don't see that ever happening again. Let's see. Except for the Patriots, and we already know how that turned out. Well, hey, keep in mind when you have the best head coach that has a good deal that knows how to put together a game plan, and a coaching staff that basically stays up like the Washington Redskins staff used to back in the day, staying up until almost three a.m. in the morning before the garbage truck came around, and like, all right, boys, we gotta wrap it up. That's what good coaching and successful leadership is. Yes. And also, tomorrow will also make, for the first time ever, two female head coaches making history. For the Washington football team, they got Jennifer King. And also, on the Buffalo Bills side of the ball, they got former D.C. Divas wide receiver, Kelly Brownson. Now, Kelly Brownson... It's some as a name that most people would recognize, but and looking up her and looking up her stats and statistics as a player for the Divas, I see why she's the best person for this job. I mean, tell me something. You know, what what person do you know who stands at only five foot three, weighs a buck sixty five, sucking wet? But runs like the white female version of Usain Bolt down the field.
That's true enough. Yep.